this is the largest smartphone that I've seen, or with the largest battery pack capacity. On the back here and on the front, actually, it mentions that it has 12 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of internal storage. In the box, you get the smartphone itself. Oh boy, that is a doozy. It's a straight up brick right here. I'll put that to the side. Uh, got a warranty card along with the screen protector accessories and a screen protector. Usually Doggy has like screen protectors that come pre-installed, so this might be an extra one, which is always nice to have. A user manual, and then a wall outlet that has fast charging. This does have fast charging, just to confirm. And then it is USB to USB-C, right here, USB to USB-C. Again, this thing is built like a brick, so yeah, wow, holy cow. Just taking it out of the plastic, I can just see. 20,000 milliamp hours is no joke. Right here. It's... Dang. How many millimeters thick is that? Like, that's got to be over, what, two inches? To clarify, this is slightly more than an inch, but not by too much. Uh, less than an inch and a half, if you can see here. And one more comparison is I got this Crave Plus Pro that the company sent out. This is a 20,000 milliamp hour battery pack. And you, as you can see, it's kind of in line. I mean, it's not as, I guess, thick. Or in the terms of thickness, it's not too far off. Like, it seems like the there's just a little bit more on the back. Slightly more, but it is shorter. So there's that. It is in line for a 20,000 milliamp hour battery just for a quick comparison. So on the side here, you've got the volume keys. Usually there's a fingerprint scanner, or this is a fingerprint scanner. Volume keys, uh, power button, the USB port inside here. I believe that might be a microphone. And then on here is a customizable button. You, got, you can get to the SIM tray and micro SD card slot. This is what it looks like, the micro SD card and tray. I easily took it out with my hands and you know just put it back in there. No problem whatsoever. Nothing really on the top, except on the back, you do have uh, flashlights and cameras. And then where is that speaker system? Speaker phone. Oh, I guess you can put like a, a clip or carabiner clip, something along those lines back here to let it rest on your backpack or wherever it might be. Speakers are front facing, and that is a great sign. I always love to see that. And they might, I think they might sound a little tinny because I tried out a couple other doggy phones and they were tinny, but front facing is better than back or to the side. And I can also tell that after taking this out, uh, there is a screen protector that is pre-installed. Well, the f fingerprint scanner works really well. I really haven't noticed too many delays or issues. It's opened up pretty much every single time that I've used it so far, so we'll keep on using that. The face unlock is not as accurate, however, it takes some time. It did open up there, which is nice, in front of the camera, too. So, yeah, not too bad at all. The screen does look pretty decent. Um, I think the only thing that's lacking is some brightness, because this, as nice as this might look, like, it's not going to look, doesn't feel pixelated or anything like that. But it doesn't feel like it would get that bright in, like, broad daylight out. Because in case if you're planning to use this outdoors, if you're a construction worker or something, then I'm not sure if this might be the best choice in terms of just the screen alone. But nonetheless, though, the battery is really what matters. And it looks like there's not too much bloatware here. Let's see how much storage space there is. It seems like we get just about 240 gigs out of the box, which is actually quite a bit. So, yeah, ton of storage space. And you also have a micro SD card, so you won't run into any problems here. You can see more of the information here along with the Android version, it's 12. Let's see how the camera looks. It doesn't look like it's anything too impressive, but just okay. It's actually not as bad as, a, bad as I thought it was. Okay, that's all right. And then front-facing camera. So just take a real quick picture here. It takes a picture relatively quickly. Um, and it actually came out decently. Yeah, it's decent. I think the only thing that I don't like is the flash. It's not that bright. All right, so in this dark environment, here's the flashlight. It's not that, again, not that bright. It looks better on video than it is in real life. It's better than nothing, of course, but I would not trust this to use during the, the nighttime. Keep in mind, there is a night vision because this does have an IR blaster. It's going to be in black and white at nighttime, but it's better than using the, the flashlight. There's also an AI mode that I just saw or noticed. So smart photo mode has been opened, HDR mode. I just took a few more pictures here. So one was with... The HDR mode, it doesn't look that much different. Maybe there's some color correction here compared to HDR here, I guess. Yeah, really don't notice a difference. Again, the, the camera overall is better than expected. Nothing crazy. 
but it's tolerable for sure. A little bit more than tolerable. It would be. Not what I was expecting, which is good. Okay, so speakers get our tinny, uh, and they sound kind of distorted when it gets at its max volume. If you tone it down a little bit, it's not too bad. Um, but again, it doesn't get as loud. Nonetheless, front-facing speakers are the way to go, so good job on Doggy for implementing this on their newer smartphones, on each newer smartphone that I've tested out, with the exception of, like, one. The thing about videos on here, they can be played at 1080p on, on like, Netflix and other ser streaming services. They're capped at 480p because of widevine level being L3. If I go into DRM info real quick, you can see it on here. Security level is L3. So this caps videos at 480p on every streaming platform except for YouTube and maybe one or two others. I'm not sure if Twitch is excluded too. But yeah, that's just an unfortunate thing with these uh, Android devices. A, a good amount of them tend to have a wide run level of L3, not just Doggy. But I wish they implemented that hopefully soon. Um, also, random note is that back here, this is just made of uh, plastic. I thought it was like going to be made of faux leather or something, but now it just feels like hollow plastic, but the sides do feel a little bit more premium, being, I think, like metal or something. In terms of performance, I haven't noticed any issues so far. Everything has been buttery smooth. You can tell on here the CPU is an ARM NT6877, and then the GPU is a Mali G68. That sounds like a higher-end one that I'm seeing for the first time. These are the benchmark results. It's actually not that bad, 2411. Uh, one thing I don't like about this new Geekbench 6 is that the... The old history is not saved anymore. It's like, where do you find it? Unless I don't know where to find it. Benchmarks are one thing. Performance is another. What better way to check it than by playing some games here? First game here is Roblox, and really no problems whatsoever. I up the ante by putting the graphics set to max. And yeah, really, there's maybe a slight frame rate drop here or there. But again, nothing crazy. Everything works really well. Next game here is RuneScape, not old school RuneScape, but the actual, like I think the latest one, whatever they call it. And there are some, I mean it's not completely smooth, but it runs really well, better than from what I've seen at least. Just, I only notice it when I'm running, it's not as like smooth as I'd want it to be. To be. Maybe that's like a little bit overthinking or overreaching there. But again, everything I've done here... Uh, it hasn't affected game performance whatsoever. Let me try to up the ante, because this was just the basic graphic level, whatever it is. One graphic I just changed, or one graphic setting, was just changing the FPS from 60 or 35 to 60, and it looks a lot more smoother now. It's capable of hand handling that much, so I'm not too worried about it. And it's not getting warm to the touch or anything, my phone, by the way. I mean, I've had this on for maybe a little over 15 minutes now of gameplay. And, yeah, still works great. It doesn't feel like it's warmed up. Because some, some phones, or even tablets, they get really hot to the touch. And that can be kind of hazardous, but not the case in here, at least. So here are some of the graphic settings that I've adjusted. Draw distance, default player modes. And I think after I did that and, and turned on anti-aliasing, it might have uh, made it a little bit slower, not to the point where it's unplayable, because if you look at the max FPS counter up here, it's not going to be consistent at 60 FPS anymore. Um, still playable levels, it's going to be above 30 FPS. You might notice some hiccups here and there, and then you're going to notice some issues, especially when you uh, look around and it goes inside of a house. That's when I started to notice a little bit more uh, stuttering and lag, but nonetheless, this is definitely playable. I'm really impressed with this phone that it can pull out a lot of this stuff. Granted, you can't max out everything here and still get 60 FPS, but this is still nice for what it's capable of. I think this is a great phone. And then, most importantly, how can you forget, with this thick of a phone, the battery life is the most important thing. Wow, I think I've had this on for over an hour now, at the very least, and it's only gone down by 2%. Granted, I haven't charged it or anything like that, and before I saw it at, like, 96% just an hour or two ago. Obviously, that's going to tell you that's a really impressive battery inside. Uh, it feels like it might take a while to recharge, but again, you do have a fast charging cable and uh, outlet. I did do an extensive video playback test back and forth starting around June 4th in the afternoon time around 3 o'clock, and I had the brightness set to around 50 to 60 percent with 100 percent brightness, of course, and it lasted until June 7th with 5% uh, left at 5.46 p.m. Granted, the videos, can, it's still working. It's still at like, what, 4% or 5% right now, which is quite impressive, 4%. It would have lasted even longer 
if I turned on battery saver. So that should tell you this is quite an impressive phone. You won't really have any problems with battery life overall. That is if you can justify the thickness of this phone. This is really thick, but it actually fits in my pockets. All right, so just uh, this goes right in my pajamas. You could see that it's a little bulky there, not too bulky surprisingly compared to what I was expecting. Then you can just take it out and just use it. If you wear skinny jeans, then yeah, this is not going to be suitable. But other than that, yeah, everything's great on this. Performance was excellent. There is a cheaper alternative that Duji sells called the S100 Pro. I think it's like $100 cheaper at least, $1 to $200. And it might have a slightly lower CPU or GPU, but it has a 22,000 milliamp hour battery. So if the battery life is solely what you're looking for, then I would consider that over this one. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And leave a like if you found this video helpful. And if you want to see more stuff like this, let me know. As always, thanks for watching.